Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. I'm Anirudh Bhatt, a final year medical student at Goa Medical College and I thank you so much for being over here. If you click on this video seeing the thumbnail, I'm pretty sure you're asking the same question that I'm asking myself. How can I complete the syllabus of 9 subjects in the final year of MBBS in such a short time, especially taking into account the clinical based exam that we all have to answer that is next or even need PG. As you all know, we are taught our final year subjects right from the third semester and therefore the syllabus can keep on piling up, especially in subjects like medicine and surgery. And because we had to answer our second year exams, our third year exams, a lot of backlog might have been developed. So what are we going to do so that we can adequately prepare not only for our professional exams but even looking into the future into our next or need PG. In such a time when the duration is quite limited, what we need, what we require in the moment is a quick tool that will gather all the information that we need about MBBS, about medicine in the palm of our hands and this is where marrow comes into the picture. I know I've spoken a lot about marrow on this particular channel and this is a recurring theme on my channel if you've seen the previous videos but I'm finding the true utility of marrow in the final year of MBBS when we have to correlate what we learn in the ward and our textbook and this is where the marrow's clinical approach is really really playing dividends over here. For example, it's very easy for us to get confused between say a restrictive cardiomyopathy, a constrictive pericarditis a dilated cardiomyopathy or a hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. The pathology and the pathogenesis, they all seem the same, but they are quite different. And if we read this directly from our textbook, highlighting the textbook, rereading it twice or thrice, we may not necessarily have a good grasp of the particular concepts. But what we need over here is for a teacher, for a source to come down to our level to teach us the very basics, the differences between the fine details between these diseases. And this is where marrow comes in with its clinical based approach. Especially Dr. Rakesh Nair from Medicine, I just absolutely love you Dr. Rakesh sir because he teaches you not from the perspective of your university exams or from the purpose of soiling MCQs. If we continuously observe, he will be continuously telling us to think about the patient. How will the patient present to us in the OPD? What will the medicine JR do? What will the cardiologist do? What will the nephrologist do? What is the role of a UG? What is the role of a PG? He trying to bring a very hospital-like scenario based on a particular disease and is just not reproducing the material from the textbook in front of us. It's that he's trying to clear the concepts so that tomorrow when we become clinicians and we see patients, we will immediately understand what is the disease pathogenesis behind it. And this complete emphasis on the pathogenesis, on the concepts, is what it will stick to us forever. In those tough times of the Viva when the examiner is shooting us question to question, I don't think we are going to remember the facts that we by hearted. We know the laundry list of causes of a particular disease or the side effects of a particular drug. I don't think we will remember all of those deep deep details. What we will remember are concepts. The cases, the clinical scenarios that we have continuously seen like Dr. Rakesh or Dr. Rohan Khandelwar or Dr. Shakshi's Arora, the concepts and the basic that they have ingrained in all of us, I think that is what is going to really help us in the end. The mountain of syllabus, I think it is virtually impossible for us to buy heart and remember everything for the particular exam. Especially in those pressure scenarios where you have to write a huge amount of paper in a very limited time. The recall time that we all have is very very limited. For example, if I know that left ventricular failure will give rise to back pressure symptoms into the pulmonary circulation, into a pulmonary stasis, a pulmonary hypertension and eventually cause right ventricular failure, it will be very easy for me to recall the symptoms and the signs in the exam like breathlessness, dyspnea on exertion, orthopnea, PND, etc. Preparing simultaneously for the NEED PG or the next exam, whichever one we will answer, is going to be quite taxing. Because as we all know, our final year is already shortened from 9 months to probably 6 to 7 months. Therefore, we have to use all the time that we have at our hand to prepare for such exams. But what we can do is go on to solving Q banks, especially those Q banks where we have a good grasp of the concepts, kind of like a reinforcing mechanism which will help us to actively recall all the things that we have studied. And let us not get disheartened by the number of MCQs that we get wrong. Let us use the QBank as a learning tool rather than a testing for ourselves. 
the Q bang and the grand test we can all give when we are intensely preparing for our NEET PG or our next examination which will start from our internship. But right now the focus should be on getting a clinical hand of things and to revise the things that we already know time and time again so that we can properly recall them in front of the examiner and in our papers. Over here, let marrow not completely replace each and every single thing that we are supposed to learn, especially by going to the wards, examining the patients, taking their history and correlating with the case papers. I feel that we will truly remember the disease and the signs and symptoms when we see it in front of us, in front of the patient. For example, alcoholic liver disease with portal hypertension, hepatic encephalopathy, it is quite tough to get all the facts and signs and symptoms of that particular disease in our brain. But if we see two or three patients of that particular disease in say even one week, I think that just imagine the patient in the examination hall, I'll be able to recollect what was the scenario. How did the patient give me the history and what was the treatment that was given by the PGs or the consultants? I feel that if I've seen the patients twice or thrice, that's it. That short note or that long note or that viva question will stick in my brain and I can recall. Go back to that particular memory. That patient was from that particular place. He came with these signs and symptoms and I auscultated these areas. I took the history in this particular areas. Yes, there was some shifting dullness, there was some fluid thrill and I can recall all of these concepts easily because I have done it on the particular patient. So let marrow not completely replace all the learning that we have done because at the end of the day, our experience that we cumulatively get from all the different sources like marrow, like our standard textbooks, like talking to our seniors and talking to our batchmates. Those are the things that will stay to us forever. Marrow has also recently launched their final year practical guide where in a proper systematic fashion, they have told us what history questions to ask, how to properly examine the particular patient. And I think as the months go ahead, they will add more case scenarios and more videos in this particular aspect. So if you are interested, if you feel that it is going to aid into your final year preparation, do watch that. The demo videos that I have was are very, very interesting and I learned a few more techniques, a few more differential diagnoses and more accurate methods of examination. So if that is a cup of tea, definitely go for it. So happens that from time to time, what happens in final year is that you are studying over here, trying to make sense of things from the particular books, rereading concepts again and again, trying to memorize some facts that we simply have to memorize. And you see that the entire world outside you is completely enjoying. As you all know, the COVID cases have gone down and people are coming out of their houses and they are going to places, they're clicking photos, etc. But what actually matters for me personally is that when I see the textbook signs and symptoms that are mentioned and the same signs and symptoms or a very similar case comes to me in front of me in the ward, the patient has the classical signs and symptoms of a particular disease. And that is an aha moment that my efforts that I have taken sitting here at home actually paid off in the end where I could actually understand one more human being, the suffering that the person is going through and kind of relate to the person's scenario that you're able to find out in this entire range of complex human bodies, you are able to find out that a human being is able to relate to another human being's pain. I think when small, small things like these, chote, chote ho, you know, when your small efforts that you have put over the years are getting rewarded in the form of the patient's thankful gesture or a simple thank you or the deep gratitude that these patients have to you. I think that is truly, truly satisfying and that is like a lifelong satisfaction that you will always have. I feel it's the desire of every single human being to know that his or her efforts are not going into waste. Getting questioned in the wards by our consultants, by the PGs and our batchmates, discussing in our groups the common case scenarios, the signs and symptoms, any interesting case findings, etc. Failing in the wards and coming back at home and finding the solutions in the form of textbooks, in the form of marrow videos or talking to our batchmates. I think this is the fun that MBBS truly is. I think also it is very important for all of us to have a peer group a very healthy peer group where we come together, share the case findings, share the key interesting examination findings, etc. So that the entire medical community is uplifted, so that the quality of doctors that are coming out, out of this medical system is truly, truly good. See, at the end of the day, there is things like next to crack, there are need pages to crack, 
but what we need right now are good quality doctors so that the overall health of the nation is improved so a good amount of competitive spirit is necessary but the end of the day we all need to cooperate because the cause is much much bigger than our personal lives so i hope i was able to convey to you in simple words how i'm using marrow and integrate it with my studies in final year of mbbs of course my strategy keeps on changing each and every single day each and every single week with the times that come with the new tests vivas and wall livings that keep on coming to all of us of course this is not like a fixed strategy there has to be some amount of flexibility here and there you and i make so many mistakes while taking history and examination and get corrected by my matchmates and the consultants and the pgs but the point is to come back home and sort out those mistakes because at the end of the day a good history a good examination will benefit the patient and you also benefit your self confidence that tomorrow you are confident enough to run a primary healthcare center or someone asks you for a medical advice you are in a position to help them all in all i think it is better that we take one single day at a time rather than make big plans which usually do not tend to work and especially in these uncertain times when we are not sure about what is going to happen with the third wave and with the different variants coming up i think it's better that we go with the flow and not overstress on planning too much i hope you enjoyed this video of a very long time and if you enjoyed this video do hit the like button subscribe to the channel and i noticed that a lot of people who watch these particular videos don't end up hitting the subscribe button come on man it's free and you can always unsubscribe later so smash that subscribe button if you too are in a final year of mbbs and you have a perspective on this particular topic and you would like to share your strategy for the entire medical community do comment in the comment section down below i read all of your comments and heart every single one of them and until then stay safe stay happy and i'll see you in the next video bye bye